Here's part four of our conversation with Albert Bouchard, former drummer of Blue Oyster Cult. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Best part of being in Blue Oyster Cult, what was that highest moment for you? I would have to say the, my favorite part it just it happened in 2016 when we played in Dublin for the first time. So, because that's, you know, I mean, uh, I, my heritage is mostly Irish, believe it or not. I mean, even I have a French name, but I'm, you know, 10% French or something, you know, and uh, 60% Irish. You well, know, I don't so. Have a French name, I don't speak French. I used to, I don't speak French anymore. Ah. Uh, Jean uh, <laughs> Yeah, of Your course. Your brother and yeah. I talked about that. Your brother and I talked uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. Um, so that was a great thing, not just because I was playing in, in, you know, in a town that my mother, you know, knew from when she was a child, but uh, that uh, the audience sang along. I, I mean, it was, you could almost not hear the PA. They were so loud singing every song, every word, you know, and these were songs that the Blue Oyster Cult didn't play that often. Well, it was actually the first time they'd ever played in Ireland. So, and that was with me. So it was awesome. It was completely awesome. I would have to say some of the others were, uh, you know, playing the World Series of Rock with Aerosmith. It was a, that was a fantastic thing. I had a one great show that I played with Blue Oyster Cult at, at Jones Beach Theater when it was raining. It was crazy, you know, because that's an amphitheater and everybody's getting wet, you know, and, and, and you're on a boat in the ocean. You know, it's, there's, you know, it's not even on land. What would be, what was the toughest part of being, it, it, while you were in Blue Oyster Cult? What was the toughest? Oh, I think that after, after I had my son, uh, that was rough. That was really rough. It was uh, rough for my wife and it was really rough for me being away from them a lot. And, uh, you know, that was in, uh, 1977 so that was really you know when we were getting good money and we had to had to do these things we you know so i couldn't like take off and you know uh we had we had scheduled our tour to accommodate the birth his birth but he was two weeks late so basically he was born he was cesarean so she was you know i had to get a you know, somebody to take care of her while I was gone. And her mother came and would stay with her. But I, you know, she had the baby. I took her home and said, see ya, it's three weeks. What can you do? I mean. Yeah, it was like, that was, that was bad, man. I, I, I felt bad, man. Blue Oyster I, Cult will be performing without their drummer. He's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was probably the worst moment was after, you know, Jacob was born. Yeah. Who were the guys that you were emulating to when you were when you were growing up? Who were the guys that that got you? Well, uh, the fir my first uh, drummer that I loved uh, was uh, Gene Krupa, of course. You know, my mother she worked for the FBI when they were located in Chicago, and so she was a single woman. She had disposable income. She had a huge record collection, and of course. You know, a Benny Goodman being from Chicago, she had lots of Benny Goodman records. So I heard, you know, Sing, Sing, Sing and all those great Gene Krupa songs. I loved the sound of that guy's drums. And uh, so that was the first thing. That was before, you know, I was aware that there was such a thing as rock and roll. You know, I, I really, you know, I took piano lessons. I loved classical music, you know, and then as I got a little older, I, I kind of liked jazz you know and then my cousin wanted to start a band and by then i wasn't sure you know he was starting a band and i remember i was playing basketball after school and in seventh or eighth grade i think it might have been seventh grade but you know i was about 12 and i heard this song playing uh, downstairs in the cafeteria with all the, you know, the, the cafeteria workers were, you know, cleaning up or whatever. And I heard the song and was walk, don't run by the ventures. So 
that was my next big uh, influence was the drummer, you know, uh, uh, there was a, a, a Howie Johnson was the one on, on, uh, you see, I didn't realize the original drummer from the Ventures, uh, who played on Walk Don't Run, that great little drum bit, he, he wasn't in the band, you know, they, they offered him like a hundred bucks or something, or 20, I think it was $25. Right. Or, or, uh, share of the record. And he said, I'll take the 25 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I think he became a landscaper. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, one of the cla most classic, but that was that's why I wanted to play rock. That one song. And then of course, we became a Beach Boys cover band, you know, when we got into high school. 